Welcome to the first edition of the Bible Study Greek video blog. Today we're going to look at John 3.22 and the imperfect tense. In case you're not familiar with my software, this is Accordance, but you can do the kind of thing that I'm doing with Accordance with Logos and some of the other software that's out there, but Accordance is my preferred choice. What I'm going to illustrate in John 3.22 is the imperfect tense. What I'm planning on doing is having the Greek text in this area, and then my translation here, the NIV here, and then I'll put different translations over here in this particular verse, I want to put up the ESV. So as we read through it, it's after these things. So meta followed by the accusative means after. He went, ha Jesus. You have the article with the noun, with the proper name, but that's okay. We don't say the Jesus, we say Jesus. So, so it's after these things, Jesus went. Oh, it's not just Jesus, it's Jesus and the disciples of him say and Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean land the countryside and there now here's our two verbs okay this verb diatribal as you can see down below is an imperfect so it's describing a past action continuous or imperfective aspect And there, he was spending time with them, and them would be the disciples, and was baptizing. Now, here's what I wanted to illustrate. You'll notice that in my translation, it's was baptizing. In the NIV, it was a simple baptized, and in the ESV, it was baptizing. And you may say, well, how come the NIV folks don't make it explicitly continuous. Why do they just say baptized and not was baptizing? Well, here's the answer. We look at several things before we translate, and one of them is the meaning of the verb. Now, this verb, he spent some time, and baptized are both imperfect. But think about what these words mean. He spent time and he baptized. If I say he baptized, what do you hear? Well, don't you hear that he was baptizing over a period of time? I mean, you wouldn't just baptize one person. You wouldn't baptize just one time, but he baptized. That's what he was doing in this place. And sometimes what we do is that we look at the tense, but we also look at the meaning of the verb and we say, how do you express the significance of this Greek form in English? And usually I like imperfects being explicitly, you know, was baptized and spelled out that way. But the very verb is continuous in its meaning. If I just say he baptized, you probably wouldn't think of just one event. Now, if you want to be very careful and you want, and especially if it were theologically important, and you wanted to make sure that it was clear that Jesus was baptizing multiple people, then you certainly would say was baptized baptizing. But baptized by itself also can convey this ongoing idea. Now here's what's interesting. This verb is also imperfect, is describing an ongoing action. And in my translation, I said he was there. That's not very explicit. But here he spent, and in the ESV, it's remained. So there you have an example in the ESV where we didn't make it explicitly imperfective, explicitly continuous, because that's what the verb means. Remain means there was there, they were there over a period of time. But when they get down to baptized, the NIV said, ah, the meaning of the word is continuous in its form. We'll leave it baptized. The ESV was baptizing. This is some of the flexibility that there is in the Greek language. You don't look just at the aspect. You look at the meaning of the verb and other things as well. Hey, while I'm here, I'll give you a little bonus point. You'll notice that the verb is singular, right? Elthen. But you have Jesus and his disciples. In other words, you have a compound subject. Now in English, this verb would have to be plural, wouldn't it? But here the verb is singular. Why? 
because the number of the verb when you have a compound subject is taken from the physically closest word. In other words, if elthen was followed by hoi mathe tai and then kai ha iesus, in other words, if mathe tai were physically closer to elthen, then elthen would have been plural. But because the closest of the two compound subjects is singular, then the verb is singular. A little extra something for this first episode. Imperfect indicates an imperfective action, a continuous action, normally in the past. And normally, you're going to make it explicitly, but sometimes, like the baptized in the NIV and the remained in the ESV, the meaning of the word is sufficient to carry that aspect into English. Very good.